Hello, Jemima. Hello, Trini. We are doing today vintage special. Um, we did, you know, a few weeks ago, secondhand um, shopping, and this is along that theme. And you know, I've over the years bought so much vintage. I've got a little bit here. We've done some films before Jemima. We're going to show you some little looks I made. To me, it's about you're either a vintage shopper who loves to live in another decade, and you do the whole look. And that can be amazing. You know, there's the women you see and they wear the pointy glass and the dress and everything. Or you wear it for the modern life you're in and you don't retro it. You just make it this kind of beautiful piece. And so that's how I like to do vintage dressing. There's, a, you know, people I think like one or the other. Yeah. yeah. So what do you like? Um, I like it how you like it. I like to have a nod to the a era. Nod. This I'm going to start. It's an opera coat and it was always called an opera coat. And opera coats were usually sort of like quite opulent, made of velvet with some beautiful sleeve detail. This is probably from the twenties maybe. I bought this for hardly anything and it's a Devore velvet and it has these little seahorses so on it. Cute. I'm dressing it down. It's about like, I've got it on now with sweatpants and my, my kind of trainery boots and a t-shirt, which has in it also some shoulder pad because there's no shoulder pads in this. And I want to give a structure, you know, a yeah. lot of the, shapes um, in different eras were kind of sloping, you know, that Victorian sloping yes. shoulder and I like to put a shoulder pad in to give it really beautiful way to hang. So this is the most casual way I'll wear it. Yeah. Like that. Sleeves, um, you know, people were smaller. So as a result, quite a few sleeves in vintage clothes are too short for me. So I always, um, and I'm going to do this more because I had originally these beautiful Elsa Peretti silver bracelets and I got these, I don't know if you remember, when I was in Italy this summer and they were 13 euros each, but just having that little bracelet there, you know, to kind of allow the some noise to go on. It, this is only if you have very long arms, but it gives something yeah. to it like that. It's That's really one cool. way I'll wear it. When I say vintage, I'm not talking 1930s. I'm talking about things from the 70s and 80s. This is a 1970s Givenchy belt. You can get fantastic belts and I adore belts. I got this one here, which I don't know if I fit anymore. That's a really, really old Yves Saint Laurent belt from the 70s. So I'm, I could do, as the velvet's thin, I could just kind of winch it in and just wear it more as a sort of dress over trouser look. And the fabric's such a beautiful soft silk velvet that it, it doesn't bulk up. Yeah. So I'll do that. You've made it so you. I feel like with sometimes second hand, you can imagine them on the person who first owned them. So true. But Joanna. adding the belt, adding the shoulders makes it so you. Yeah, it's like, what can you do to make it you? Yeah. Great, so that's number one. I'll show a couple more. So I'm just going to do makeup first and then I'm going to take you through the look. So I think it's really simple. I just want to have that colour from the Prada print and it's really like Dahlia. I'm just going to do darkness of Dahlia because it feels more modern. And then I'll put a tiny bit on my cheeks and I'll put a little bit on my eyes. And then I'm going to come in with some Magician, which is cool, tiny, very light smoky eye because the colour is quite strong on my lips and then of course it'd be good to rub in my blusher. Okay so I've got the lip bringing out that beautiful, I call it nearly magenta, Bougainvillea, my favourite kind of shade, but there's a few key tricks here. One is when you have something that you can just about do up but it really pulls like this, you need a belt to cover the pulling. So that's why I don't mind that this is a thick belt and not giving me much of a waist. It's more important that you don't feel it's too small for me. It's quite high waisted. So that's why I ended up going for a skirt. I couldn't find a pair of trousers where the waist wasn't high enough for me to wear the belt. And a lot of vintage to me is, I will repeat this endlessly, it's about playing down the glamour of what that vintage piece used to be to make it feel more ageless and timeless. You know, this I think is really maybe sort of early 30s, maybe you think Vita Sackville West. Now I did wear this and you know, wearing it just with a trainer is fine. But the reason I'm not going to style it up more is it's now too small for me because it just broke. <laughs> so I will get it fixed and I'll save it for Lila. She was going to wear it one Christmas. Um, but the sleeve again is beautiful, but the sleeve again is short. So similarly, oh, yeah. I would do, you know, I would do um, bracelets and I might sort of do um, orange resin ones, you know, something like that to make it a bit different. Uh, but wearing it with a trainer, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a very opulent fabric. So you need to kind of play it down. Lila's christening 16 years ago. 
I still fit the dress only because she was only a few months old and I was taking off the baby weight. So what am I going to do with it? This is the modern rendition of that dress. And I looked a long time to what I think I'd do with it, but I wanted to make it change from being a shift dress, putting a shirt underneath and then th very carefully, what kind of shirt with no button. So nothing would show through because the fabric is thin. And then I thought in order to broaden my shoulder, can I have some blues on sleeve? You know, it echoes the kind of lovely gathering that's in the bottom of the dress. And then I've done that more rock and roll shoe boot. But then the makeup, you know, I was eternally sort of ethereal, but I want to be a bit more rock chicky. So let's do some makeup. I'm wearing a bit of Desire, which is an eye to eye, just to give that sort of smoky eye under and over my lashes. But, you know, I'm not pretty Miss Perfect in this. I want to be a bit more sexy wigs because I think it needs quite a lot of blusher because it washes me out and then I got to put some on my nose and some on my forehead just so I'm I'm blushed everywhere and then in, lastly in my stack is some Dido because I just think that's pretty but with brightness on my lip and then I'll put a tiny bit like that it's you know a little bit of a smoky eye but still the femininity of the dress shows through this is a dress I wore a lot. You know, the clothing advice today is inspired by things that people find in vintage stores. And there was one really famous woman that everyone would buy from, from sort of Galliano to all the designers. And they were, especially those beautiful 1930s Devorah, you know, silk dresses and things that you see this summer that were very fashionable to do sort of lingerie during the day. And that was inspired from the 30s. And, you know, they would do that and, and Clothes are always an inspiration of a generation gone past, and it's what can you take from the shape of that to bring it into the future. So this one day Lila might wear from Sentimental Value, I will never wear it again because I'm just, I feel <laughs> I've done something that is very casual, a tracksuit bottom, albeit with a lovely stripe from Serena Butte, but it's still the elasticated waist, it's the little do-up thing, a Zara jumper, kimono I got from Japan that's actually one from so sort of 1910s, so it's really old. And then I found some vintage jewelry. I just kind of thought, let's make it glam, but keep the sweatpant. I love that really glam statement necklace with a casual, casual bottom half. And this is an old Lanvin and it's about 17 years old. This is something I should be giving to Lila. My step grandmother who smoked 80 cigarettes a day till she died on TV. This was hers. So there's a there's a real nostalgia. So um, it is too small, but I just want to show for anyone who has a lovely, you know, sort of slight brocade vintagey coat, because there's so many of these in secondhand markets and vintage markets. How can you modernize it? Don't do me a disservice by saying Trini, it's too tight. Don't keep it, because I know Lila will want it one day, and I want to show you guys how to do it. So there's so many little things here. I learned when I was putting this outfit together. One is I need to break the lining for it even to get on me. But the other thing is all about lengths. So when something is vintage, it's of an era where there was a very, very defined length of how things were worn. And in the late 50s and early 60s, it was sort of bracelet sleeve and just below the elbow. I need to cover that distance to make it more timeless. And I found this Victoria Beckham shirt and it's for Target. I remember it was the best deal of the century. The most important thing is I wanted to have something with a very deep cuff so you didn't see the shirt in two bits below the bracelet sleeve. And the shirt needs to be white and crisp. This is a contrast to the kind of very vintage feel of a brocade fabric. And then with trousers and not with a dress, and I've done a cropped trouser because to me an ankle crop is a more timeless modern trouser. So these are the Zara ones from last summer. And a brogue, so the shoe is really modern and takes an echo of the gold of the outfit. And then in my ears, I have my mother's earrings that I just found when I was clearing out her things. And I never ever saw her wearing them apart from when she was like in her 20s. So I adore that. To me, it was about keeping that same color underneath. It makes yeah. it uh, a little bit more chic. So this is an old Prada coat and I bought this, I think like 2004. So it's about 16 years old and it had a huge rosette here and it used to do up I do still wear it many different ways, but I'm gonna try it a very different way today because whenever I wear it, I still feel it's a bit vintage. So, little secret um, I didn't show you before, but this is my mum's old Hermes bag. 
I would always wear it in a ladylike way. And I just thought, let me just do the longer strap. And it is quite high and I quite liked it. So I've decided for this, it works. And the other key thing is neon because neon will make anything vintage feel timeless. Timeless. The bag is a really beautiful present that my father gave my mum, and I hardly wear it. I wouldn't give this to Lila till she was 50 um, because I know she would trash it. And then I just put Katinka on because I wanted my makeup to feel quite funky with a lip, not a classic red, or I could have done a classic red actually. Classic red could have been really nice. I didn't think of that. But then I put bunny over the top. All right, final outfit is, you know, it's not that old. This is a coat which I got secondhand um, about 25 years ago from a cashmere company. So it's not vintage, but it's secondhand. And it, what's really interesting is if you notice the color palette of everything that's on this rail, it's quite muted. Yes. You know, neon was not invented. Those shocking colors when Schiaparelli was a you know, the designer um, started her collection. She did this Schiaparelli pink and it was like, everyone was mesmerized. That was kind of the first time you had this bold color. It's like so shocking. And then Saint Laurent in the seventies did neon yellow for the first time in his collection, sharp black suit with neon, neon yellow, seventies or very early eighties, probably seventies. So I find, you know, it harks back to those sharp colors with muted colors and fabrication. So with wools, with velvets, how can you make them, bring them into the modern age? Lila knows that I have an obsession with these guys. <laughs> and she bought me this book from Amazon. It's just a little notebook, but it was so hilarious. She made me be on FaceTime when I opened it. And that's the one thing. If you buy something from a vintage store, the chances that some moths are in it are very high. So before you introduce it to your friends in your wardrobe, Put it in the deep freezer if you can yeah. dry clean it if you have to but don't let those moth eggs flourish your makeup looks lovely with this what are you wearing i did myco because i, I oh, wanted to nice. do just sheer shimmer and i've just i literally i've got rebalance on today because my my skin has been you know um kind of is a, a, very, a little red underneath from a treatment i did so i just did rebalance and myco on my lip and cheek i love it with it. this thank you darling so next week i we've got a few things you know that we've sort of been looking at so um, I think I've got white shirts, knitwear, we said those already. Um, I'd love to do something else with Lila because I know, I mean, literally a million people saw that across uh, Instagram and Facebook. I haven't told her that yet. And I don't know, what else, Jemima? Um, I'm thinking some pink soon. We haven't oh, touched yeah. that for a while. We do pink. And also it's breast cancer yes, awareness. coming um, up. And I think it'd be great to do pink. So yeah. we might do a take on pink. All right, darling. Thank you so much, Trini. Until Bye. Next week. Bye.